What's up, guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to do、uh, Tangent Comics issue number one, Secret Six, made by Chuck Dixon, Tom Graven, and Larry Strucker.、Uh, so a little bit of a backstory, if you will, for those who not know, what is Tangent Comics and why do they use DC Secret Six? Well, basically, it, it's DC Comics, but、uh, DC tried for one and maybe two years. Try to build some kind of a universe called Tangent Comics, and you know, throw in you know a couple of heroes, change their appearance, change their powers,、uh, but they have the same name like the Atom, Plastic Man,、um, Manhunter, Spectre, the Flash, Joker, etc., etc. Um, these basically are more like one shots, and they are not pretty thick. They are pretty thick,、um, and they are just telling stories in self-contained stories. But the downside is there's no how do you say big event. It's not like you know much of origin stories, and then you build a universe around that. No, it's just more like hey, there is already a universe established, although it's never been written, it's never been shown. It's never been、uh, drawn, but it's here, right? So these people know each other. The villains know each other. There's a, a, some kind of a plot line already woven into the story. And I thought to myself, okay,、um, are there more Secret Six、uh, comics that I have to read to understand this particular universe?、Uh, no, they are just one shots, basically. And it, I believe it ran from 1997 to 1998. I believe, and there was about I just looked it up real quick. 18 comics in total, and they are all all one shots.、Um, some of them are fun. Some, of, you know, not so much.、Um, but yeah, I just bought a couple of them and to see you know what it's all about because I my knowledge about Tangent Comics is pretty limited. But I must say, I didn't know that there was so many, you know, high-level、um, artists and writers are involved. I mean, we have Mark Millar,、uh, hey, we have Chuck Dixon and Tom Grummet here. We also have、uh, Mike Mayhew,、uh, Ryan Sook,、uh, Dan Abnett, Andy Lanning, Gary Frank.、Uh, a lot of these creators are involved in these kind of comics that I even didn't know they are, you know, existed or that they actually were involved. Um, Daryl Banks,、uh, Norman Rapmund, Dan Jurgens, to name a couple of more.、Um, yeah, and I got, I believe, six of them, five or six of them in total from the eighteen, maybe a little bit less or more. I'm not entirely sure, but I just, you know, buy them once in a while if I get my hands on it. So, <clears throat> without further ado, let's talk about this comic if it's good or not. And.、Uh, I just told you these names, but I didn't know. <laughs> Actually, I didn't know. I have to look that up in a comic. So, if you saw this, you never would have guessed that this was Manhunter. Well, okay, moving on. So,、um, also, these creatures are with、uh, orcas with hands are called sea devils. They are highly evolved marine life.、Uh, like I said, there's a story behind that that's not really clear, but they are just there and. I don't know. They're migrating, I guess, and then some thing is happening on the bottom of the ocean, and they are there's an explosion, and they are dead, and they are being investigated by these guys now. So who are these guys? I believe this is some kind of a military organization that rules the world. But again, I have no clue. I just know that these people are pretty important because in every comic that I've read, these guys are in it.、Uh, so they are. Believe the police or governments ask stuff. Not entirely sure. So they are,、um, you know, saying they, they, there's some need some investigation going on. That's why these marines are, you know,、uh, dead here. And、uh, then we switch to、um, I don't know some kind of a comic con, I guess, or superhero con. And there's a、uh, How do you say a meeting with the superheroes? So Adam here is supposed to be, you know, is a Superman-like character. We have the Flash and her mom. That, you know, basically she is a superhero, but she is don't like the word grooming. But you know, grooming her, you know, younger daughter into become a real superhero. She's a 
living hologram, by the way, or something like that. And then we have Hawk and Dove, but it's not Hawk and Dove, it's Canary and something, something. I don't know. Um, okay, moving on. Um, so there is an alert here and there, and, and Adam says, oh, hey, wait a minute, there's something going on, and I have to check that out. And um, Canary wants to come along, and uh, but she says, hey, can you fly? And she says, no. And then her mother think you know wants to I don't know hook them up with uh, with his with uh, her daughter, and says well, my daughter can because he's made of light, and she is instantly zapping to that location, uh, to the and, well, Canary's not happy. Who's this guy? I want to know. Let me let me double check. I don't know. I can't find it really well. So, fun, 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 fun. I don't know. It's just I need to, to figure that out. Anyway, I don't know, Hawkman or something. All right, let's move on. Um, meanwhile, this guy is having not a good time here. And uh, you see all these people are dead. And he says, hey, what do you want? And this is in Guatemala, by the way. So we see here Manhunter. Um, I must say, I like the costume a lot. And here's also that, this spiky thing that I just saw a moment ago, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, her costume, uh, I'm going to refer a lot of, uh, by the way, guys, I'm going to refer a lot of to other superheroes and villains because, well, this is more like a mishmash. Uh, her costume reminds me of Judo Master. Judo Master uh, is a very old male and later female superhero in the DC universe that faded into obscurity. And I thought, hey, man, this could be probably a judo master. And then they say, well, this is a, I don't know, Manhunter with a robot dog. Anyway, so uh, she wants to kill him because of the horrors that he did to her people. And uh, he says, hey, you worked at the chemical uh, lab at uh, Svitavi, whatever that is. And um, he said, hey, uh, let me live and I'm going to tell you who's my boss is and, you know, the, the, the guy above him. And, uh, and then she says, okay, talk. I'm not going to kill you, I swear. So he spills the beans, who's, who's the big guy is. But of course, we have, oh, no, no, the robot dog, because he doesn't make any promise about the dog killing this guy. And actually, he's going to do that, or it. Um, so he says, off the western coast of Mexico, just north of the Tropic of the Cancer. He continued his life's obsession, talking about, the, you know, a, a guy called Dr. Aquadius, director of the Svitavi Collective. Okay, interesting. I don't know what the Svitavi Collective is, but cool. Uh, anyway, so the Spectre is now here at this, I don't know, lab or something. He's a thief. He's just become intangible and invisible. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's infiltrating and he's seeking something. And then he has a voice. He says, uh, nice try, Spectre. You are the Spectre, right? And um, so he's now trapped. I thought he be could walk through walls, but apparently he can only turn invisible. I'm not even sure what his power sets are. You know, that's a little bit the difference different with this Tangent universe. They have the name. They change the appearance of that character like this. Uh, Spectre guy, but I have no clue what his name is. Or I mean, what his power sets are. Um, you know, along with this this character here that talks to him. Uh, so it seems that he is um, living polymer, and he is called Plastic Man. Yes, which reminds me a little bit of Chemo. You know, when it comes to physical appearance. So uh, it seems that Plastic Man is working for some kind of a boss. That is one of the good guys, and I, you can compare it in with you know Marvel Shield, I, I guess, and they want to recruit him, and um, etc. So he has no choice to comply. Um, okay, cool. And then we go to uh, take a guess who this character is. Oh, it says here it's the Riddler. Yeah, this is totally the Riddler. I don't know. And this is some, uh, somewhere at I don't know New Atlantis or something. And he wants to have cash because of this gala in here or something, or like a charity event. And then we have the Joker that does this. And when he walks forward, <laughs> I, I, it made me laugh a little bit because it's way too silly. 
Now, I must say this joke is not really that funny. They really tried to, you know, hard to make her funny, but actually she is not. Although I have the one shot, it's okay, I guess. But, you know, don't, don't, yeah, it's, it's, it's not the Joker as you, as you know it, uh, or a variant. So she's a little bit pissed off that she has just prevented some kind of a theft here and that her name was not mentioned in the news. And then she sees these orcas, you know, uh, washing about the shore and then she's going to investigate for whatever reason. And then we go to, you know, below the sea, uh, to a west coast, to be more specific, um, or Pacific. Um, so it seems that there is a group of supervillains, and this is guy is called, um, I don't know, Warlords, and we have some cool looking characters here. Now, I'm coming back to this character a little bit later, although it's not really important. Um, and guess who this character is? I'm not saying anything for now, but you're never going to guess it. Um, so there is some, there you have some ulterior motives, of course. And then we are getting introduced to um, Dr. Aquadius. I just thought Aquarius, that was, was in my mind, but it's Aquadius in a water form. And they have the plan to um, use a god-like gun. That's how, I, that's, that's how I call it, right? Well, they call it a planet gun. That's probably better. I said, is it ready? And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And basically, they are just preparing. So these two girls are an integral part of that. But then the alarm goes off. And um, they are getting infiltrated by uh, the Joker. So this guy called Gunner, and this is, I don't know, Major something something. It's called Sergeant. Um, he's getting his ass beat by her with this fist staff thingy. And it looks cool. Now, coming back to this design, if you look closely, and if you are maybe an old school Marvel uh, um, fan, or, well, you cannot be a Marvel fan today anymore. Anyway, but if you were a Marvel fan, just like me, it really reminds me of um, Doomsday Man. Now, who's Doomsday Man? Like I said, I'm just mixing, you know, um, f you know, a little bit heroes and supervillains from different companies. Uh, Doomsday Man was a Miss Marvel, Carol Danvers villain, uh, which is pretty. Uh, it was a pretty cool design, and it really reminds me of that. And um, but. <laughs> So they have her on the ropes. They are she's about to get killed or something, or you know. Um, but then they are, these two are getting killed by none other than Robot Dog, and <laughs> I'm calling him Robot Dog or it, um, and Manhunter. So I thought by myself that Gunner and Major were I mean maybe something important to the plot, but they are not because they are lying here with face down in in the water. So they are gone. So. It seems that these guys are going to team up. And um, so they take the, the, the boat where these two guys came from and they're going to dive, right? And meanwhile, we have the Spectre and Plastic Man walking on the bottom of the ocean and we see a little bit more um, characterization, but also what happened because who is actually Plastic Man? We know we, we don't learn anything, anything about the Spectre, by the way. And he is... Not even sure why he's doing, why he's here in the comic. But it seems that uh, Plastic Man, he's not a robot. He says the real me controls this form from a hidden lab. This is how you get out of the house, Spectre says. The only way, Spectre, my actual self is in a permanent coma on life support. Oh man, that's pretty grim. Um, and they talk about the Sinestro's little hideaway. So probably Sinestro's is maybe the group of villains. You know, like, um, why am I blanking? Uh, that, oh man, Hydra, you know, maybe then they call it Sinestros, I guess. And uh, see, he says, since my boss's arch rival organization, Meridian, is funding this romantic getaway, get ready to start earning our base. So yeah, I believe Meridian, if I'm reading that correctly, is more like, like I said, S.H.I.E.L.D. and Sinestro is more like... Uh, the other organization with the octopus head, one cut off or two cut off and two rises. You know, Hail Hydra and all that stuff. Meanwhile, we have um, this guy, Warlord, and he has said, hey, there's uh, some trouble here. 
go check it out. And this guy's called Damage. <laughs> okay. So uh, he hears his name. Warlord! Yes, Doctor. Why are we at the, why are attacking the final moments before a, a apogee? Is that, what is the apogee? Okay. Divert a non-vital power to the center. The Eclipsos uh, are entering the generation chamber. So I thought to myself, who are the Eclipsos? And then I forgot to check this out because these two women are the Eclipsos. What their power sets are, I have no clue. <laughs> anyway, he says, uh, as soon as our target comes within the firing window, the Earth enters its next age. So I thought to myself, why? What, what are you going to shoot? What is the importance, right? Well, it seems that they are... I'm going a little bit too quick here. So... This is happening, and, you know, I want to say Metal Man, but that's not it. Um, Plastic Man, you know, fights then. Um, damage. Which, okay, moving on. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, Judo Master, not Judo Master, also known as uh, Manhunter, is, you know, shooting the evil guys. And um, so she says, I'm not a fan. Well, Harley... I want to say Harley Quinn, that's not it. Um, but I believe this is Duela Dent. Uh, that's her, how do you say, alias? But I could be wrong. Yeah, let's let's say I'm wrong. But I'm not in entirely sure. Anyway, she says, I'm not a fan of uh, fascist secret cabals, but you make me feel uh, sorry for them. You would spare them your pity if you knew the depths of Dr. Aquadius' evil. So who is this Aquadius guy? He was one of the war scientists who created the bioweapon that nearly depopulated Eastern Europe in the last war. Red Tornado. Okay, that's probably how he's called, I guess. And um, anyway, so he says that he is not, re he is not really qualified as human. Um, and then we go to, uh, you know, this fight scene with um, Plastic Man and Damage. And I must say it looks cool, uh, actually. And... Um, so they are going on here a little bit. It's not really that important, but it, you know, we have to have some spectacle in it. Meanwhile, Aquadius is ready. And he says, what was the tremor? Um, don't dare lie to me, Warlord. We have some intruders, but we're taking care of it. There is no time for your incompetence. I will deal with them myself. But we are approaching our target window. I will obliterate these trespassers when in turn in time. Once the weapon has been fired, the forces arrayed against us will be powerless. I must say the art looks great. I mean, you know, Tom Gromit. I, I still don't know what happened to Tom Gromit, by the way. Um, and then we have Spectre. I have no clue what this kid is doing. I mean, is this the only power to, I don't know, be invisible and become visible? I don't know. It seems pretty... Well, in this case, useless. I mean, I don't mind, you know, wanting that power. I mean, can do a lot of things with that, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, but then, uh, so we we arrive here with Flash and Adam, and he says, she says, hey, what are we looking for? You know, anything out of the ordinary or unusual, Flash. So uh, Aquarius is, just, you know, taking. So I'm a little, maybe I'm a little bit too quick here, but Aquarius is a water elemental he can control water actually and then he does this and he's going to capture those because they are now powerless here somehow and um so he wants to once i am free of my bondage because that's his goal no longer will no longer be i will be no god i'd be i will no longer be dr aquarius i will be aquaman now, I'm not sure that is a a cool name. I mean, Dr. Aquarius sounds more evil than Aquaman. Doesn't really fit, in my opinion. Um, anyway, but yeah, since he's a water elemental, I can see that, right? So, um, final stages. So what is happening? They are pointing the gun, this, this piece of equipment, towards the moon. Now, if you know, oh, well... Maybe you're not, but if the moon is obliterated, let's say it's exploded or it's, you know, going down or whatever, we are in trouble. Our, our species will be wiped out because we have, we're going to have tidal waves. We're going to have earthquakes, volcano eruption. It does 
um, a lot of bad things to Earth if the moon is disappearing in real life, uh, then, then we are doomed. Then there is no coming back from that. Then our, our species is over. Then we're dead. Uh, so I guess by, you know, shooting the moon, and I'm not sure why all these people are on board with that, by the way, because they are doomed too. But hey, comics, right? Uh, so um, in 40 seconds, we change the world forever as we blast the Earth's moon to fragments. And he says, wait. Oh, no, what? He says. And then, so this warlord turns around. Who are you? And then Plastic Man comes in. And then Joker and not you, the master comes in. Um, so what did you actually do besides saying what? So a little bit, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, Warlord is actually useless, just a guy in a helmet. So I thought, oh, maybe he has some superpowers. All right? No, he's not. So he's being taken capture, and he says, um, Plastic Man says, so what's going on here? And uh, Judah Master says, I mean, not Judah Master says, where's Dr. Aquadius? Yeah, you're too late. For what? They're going to blow up the moon. Start talking. Aquadius wants to eliminate Earth's satellites since he became a water elemental. I know all about that. I was there. Interesting. So it seems that Aquadius was a head of the Svivari War Scientist Labs. And he wants to go back after that war to his passion. Uh, it's more like the teleportation of living issue. That's his, I know, his experiment. But there is some kind of an overload uh, and a facility at a critical stage. Everything is exploding, um, and it seems that whoever this guy wants was was turned into a blob of melted polymer, and Dr. Aquadius was merged with the waters of Lake Bodvar. Okay, so two oranges in one. I like that. I like that. That's pretty nice. So Aquadius is here, and he's taunting, and then, you know, as we see this Adam and Flash here. Um, he says, within seconds... Uh, the elimination of the moon. My pow power over all the seas will be unchallenged. Uh, anyway, so these two girls are powering up. Uh, he says, um, so he explains what happens, right? When the twins' power reaches its zenith, the planet gun will deliver the narrow cast beam spanning the quarter million miles to the moon, superheating the ice beneath the moon's crust. The, the escaping gases will tear the moon apart. That's pretty nefarious. Actually, so uh, not Judah Master, also known as Manhunter, shoots the, um, the I don't know what, what's it called. Is this a liquid container? Let's let's call it that. So that you know, Adam and Flash are you know be free. Um, and then these two says uh, we need to disrupt the higher the power source. So what's the power source? Uh, well, Flash, who is a living hologram and controls light, you know, jumps into well. The reactor, I'm not sure that's the reactor, but let's call it that. And she says, hi, and then zip. <laughs> and she says, this is the last time I'm breaking connection between two polarized chicks. So, yeah, <laughs> it, it's over. <laughs> so um, you're pretty heavy for a living hologram. I'm not. She's basically still a kid here. So everything is exploding now here, of course, because, well, it's a comic and also it happens in movies. So Dr. Aquarius is not really happy at all. And he says, hey, I'm going to drown you because there's no escape. You are here at the ocean. But then he suddenly loses his form. And um, so this guy says, Dr. Aquarius, don't. The planet guns backlash will. So he implodes, I guess, or explodes outside. Yeah, he's exploded because these are birds. They are not living underwater. And he turns into um, rain. <laughs> So he loses form and now he's just, you know, rain. He has no conscience anymore. So basically they saved the day and now they are talking about forming a group of people. But they all say, hey, listen, I'm not really uncomfortable. I'm comfortable with that. I'm, I'm just more like a loner and, 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 you know, and so everybody has their own, you know, reasons not to join. But they eventually will because because it's it's a secret and they call him themselves uh, Secret Six, get it? Secret Six. But then there's also the robot dog, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. 
it was funny. It was it, it was cool. I um, you know it's a, it's a small simple story. Oh, it's simple. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty simple. But uh, I like the art and you know all these characters that I never heard of. But you know the downside is, um, like I said, all these this this a thing happening here, and I have no clue what and why because there's also organizations, dark organizations like. Um, Nightshade of dark night, Nightwing or Nightshade or whatever, you know. There's more stuff going on, and as the president involved and, and another evil organization, sorcerers, you know, they also have a Superman that's actually a bold, bold black man that reminds me of Green Lantern and John Stewart, and he has a cloak and a staff. It's 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 all way 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 different, and I like that, but at the same time. Um, I'm missing a lot of information and I can see why this is not, you know, sustainable because at some point you have to expand this. But what I didn't know is, um, do you know, remember, um, Jesus, try 24 minutes already. Okay, let me explain this real quick. So it seems that um, Tangent Universe was Earth 97, I believe. That was the pre-crisis after the crisis. Uh, or during a crisis, um, they were become part of Earth-9. So Tangent Comic still exists, but since there are 52 universes, because that's the whole thing with the DC Universe, um, we're probably never going to hear from them again. Since, well, DC is down the drain, they are uh, creatively bankrupt, and the comics are doing really, really, really bad. So I hope they go bankrupt, because fuck Marvel and fuck DC, in my opinion. And, um, you know, just read 90s comics. That's all you have to, uh, that's all you have, you need in life. 90s comics, not saying this, this is really good, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, my opinion, if you like uh, Mar New Marvel and New DC, good for you. I'm not. Well, not really. Bye, guys. I'll see you later.